Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a vector pattern but using a raster image to make it with in Illustrator. And this is because one of my subscribers asked me how to do it. So I started off at unsplash.com, one of my favorite places for downloadable stock imagery. And I selected this image here by Brooke Lark because I thought a couple of these cookies would make a really good pattern. But there's one other that I saw just a minute ago as I was coming through here that I think would make a really good pattern too is these little stars. They're probably a bit easier than the cookies but just have a look for something that you can isolate relatively easy to use as your pattern piece. Now I've gone to Illustrator and I did file open and opened up the JPEG image. It'll open here in Illustrator. You can see this is the artboard and this is the image itself so it's way too big. So I'm going to start by selecting the image hold shift and option and just scale it down to sort of artboard size. Then I'll zoom in so I can see my image. Now this is a bitmap or a raster image inside Illustrator. First thing we need to do is to turn it into a vector. And for this, with the image selected, we'll click on image trace. Now the image trace isn't going to work first up because it's going to look like something like this. So what we'll do is go to the image trace panel here, just click on it. You can also get to that by choosing window and then image trace if you can't see a link to it on your control bar here. I'm going to turn preview off because I want to make some settings and if you don't turn preview off then Illustrator every time you make an adjustment is going to try and re-render this trace and that's just not going to be helpful. So I'm going to select color as my mode. I'm going to select a full tone palette here. I've got paths and corners set pretty high and noise set sort of medium low. This is a good set of settings for a trace and I'll just click preview to go ahead with that trace and we'll wait as Illustrator does the work. What Illustrator is doing is effectively vectorizing this image. It's finding paths and coloring paths to turn a bitmap image into a vector. Now this is done and you want to have a look in here and see if the trace is what you want. I want a sort of medium quality. I want it to have a slightly painterly look and not be photorealistic. I could have backed off even more perhaps taken down the size of the palette and got something even a bit more painterly. But I'm pretty happy with this result. So as I'm happy and I'm ready to make the commitment, I'll click expand and that just converts that into the component pieces. And you can see everything's gone blue. It's exactly as it should do. I'm pressing control or command zero so I can get back out full size on the artboard and just see what I've got. Now this image now contains vector objects. So this is what I'm going to do to make my pattern. I'm going to select two pieces that I want to work with. So I'm going to work with this piece and this piece. And I've already done these, but I'm going to show you what I did. So make the shape that you're going to use the size of the window so you can see it clearly and go to the lasso tool. With this tool, you're just going to run around the shapes here. So you want to select all the way around this cookie, but not into the other cookies. So I've got that area selected. You can see that some of these shapes are much bigger, but I've essentially got my cookie selected. I'll press Control or Command C, Control on a PC, Command on a Mac. I'll create a brand new document for this. So let's go and click Create, and I'll do Edit, Paste or Control or Command V. Let's zoom in here. So before we go and create the pattern, we're going to need to do a little bit of tidying up. So I'll go to the magic wand tool, double click on it. And for this, I'm going to set the fill color as my option for the magic wand and set a really low tolerance. That means I can select on these shapes around the edge of this cookie to select them and then just press delete to delete them. You'll need a fairly small sort of tolerance value if you're working on these particular cookies. With other objects, you might need a much larger tolerance value. You'll just need to experiment with that. If you want to add multiple shapes as you're selecting, just hold down the shift key and that lets you 
select multiples at a time. So at this point around this side, I may want to just increase this value a little bit because I've got a bigger range of colors that I want to get rid of. But you'll just come in and remove these. Now, another way of removing them is to go to the lasso tool. And with the lasso tool, you'll just come in and select sort of roughly across the shapes that you want to remove. And I'm just coming around here. Now I'm going to make a big circle out here because these are the ones I want to remove. You can go to the selection tool, to just make sure you have them selected and then press delete. And so you'll continue to work on these just to get rid of the edge pieces that you don't want to have inside your pattern. Obviously control or command Z if you make a mistake. So I've already gone ahead and done this, but one thing that you will want to make sure that you do, this is the two shapes that I've created, is that once you've done one of these shapes, go ahead and select it. Check in the layers panel to see what you've got. And you see here I've got individual shapes. So first of all, I'm going to group them with object and then group. So that means they're going to travel as a single object, makes it much easier later on. But the other thing is that as soon as you paste in a second shape and start to select and remove things from it, if you don't lock this shape down, then you're going to start removing things from this shape as well. So we would lock this down and then bring in a second shape that perhaps we wanted to make some edits to clean up and get ready to make into our pattern. But as I said, I've already gone ahead and done this. I've got my two shapes here. I'm going to unlock the one that I locked first of all. I've got two groups, two shapes, and we're ready to go ahead with our pattern. To make your pattern, I'm using Illustrator CC, but you can do this in Illustrator CS6. You'll first of all select on your shapes and then choose Object Pattern Make. Illustrator will automatically add your new pattern swatch up here. It doesn't look very good, but it's a temporary sort of placeholder. If you see this dialog, just click OK. Now we'll bring in our pattern options and you can see that Illustrator has gone ahead and created this pattern. It's looking reasonably good. I just think it could look a little bit better. Now the dim copies is set to 100%. If I set that to 50%, we'll be able to see which bit is our pattern piece, which is this piece here, and which are the repetitions. So the elements that we can move around, if you like, are these that are at full opacity. These other ones are just a visual indication as to what our pattern is going to look like. They're just not working right now. They're just the pattern objects. Now you can set the number of copies to whatever you like. I'm using 5x5. Five this has no effect at all on the final pattern. It's just what you see on the screen right now. So I'm going to just move things around a little bit. I'm going to take this piece and just move it up a little bit and then wait as Illustrator reforms the pattern. Now this is looking pretty good. If I click on the show tile edge, we'll actually see what the Illustrator pattern tile is looking like. This is what the pattern tile would be. I'm pretty happy with that, so I'll go ahead and click Done. And over here in the Swatches panel is the Pattern Swatch for my pattern. So at this stage, I can go ahead and remove those two elements because I don't need them anymore. Let's go and make a rectangle that is the size of the artboard target the fill, click on our pattern swatch, and this is our pattern. Now the pattern is transparent in that the areas around these cookies is blank. I want to add a sort of blue color to it, the blue color that was originally in the artwork. So let's see how we would do that. Let's just zoom out because I want to bring my pattern piece out of the swatches dialog. So I'm just going to drop it in here what I'm looking for is the no fill, no stroke rectangle that is at the back of the pattern. So we just come in here and have a look at this rectangle. So this is it here in the group. And what I'm looking for is this element, this no fill, no stroke rectangle at the very base of the pattern. That's the thing I need to fill to add a color to my pattern. But I also need the original. So I'm going to drag and drop this onto the new layer icon. The bottom most one, and it has to be the bottom most one, has to be as it was. It's just a no fill, no stroke rectangle. Don't do anything with that 
that one. But the one that you just created, the one above that, you can go and fill. So I've got the fill targeted here. I had already previously sampled that blue color from the background of that original image. So this is a sort of blue color here and I'd save that away. So now I've got a blue base to my pattern. So it's not going to be white or see-through. It's going to be this blue color, but making sure that it's this rectangle here that is filled with color. And the one at the very base should be your standard no fill, no stroke rectangle. Don't do anything with that because it's marking out your pattern piece. If you do something with that, the whole thing's going to break. It's not going to work anymore. So let's go and reselect everything. Just make a big selection over all of these elements. And let's just drop it into the swatches dialog. Now let's go back to our pattern here, select on it, make sure that the fill is targeted. And now let's go to our pattern that has that blue fill in it. So that's a way that you can convert a raster or bitmap image. It can be a photograph. It could be a piece of clip art into a vector image and then make a vector pattern from it. Now, this is a vector pattern that's going to scale to a very large size. The higher the quality that you make your trace, the better quality you're going to have in the final result. But you may want a slightly lesser quality to get that sort of painterly look. That's fine too. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've learned lots of things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, click the notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And until next time, I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.